June the 27th, 2023. Guys, you're looking at the National Weather Service map, and we've got terrible heat across the southeast. It's setting in, and for you guys here in my state of Mississippi, tomorrow is going to, they're saying Wednesday through Friday could be the hottest days. But guys, it's already predicted to be 115 degrees here, real feel today. And I'm looking at my weather, um, small weather station that I have, and it just went from 101 back to 100 because we're starting to get some cloud cover, possibly a little wood smoke cover this far south. I'm not sure, but the central part of the U.S. is definitely getting hit. Now, in your orange areas, these are heat advisories. You've got excessive heat warnings in the purple. You've got, uh, in this area, excessive heat watches. So think about it, guys. You're going to over past central Alabama, up through western Tennessee, you over into Arkansas, Kentucky, Indiana. And got, Indiana, you got hit by a terrible tornado. But look north of you at all that gray area. That's Canadian wildfire smoke, and we're going to look at it from satellites. Also, right here in this special weather statement, under the smoke watch, and really this should be ex extended down into Indiana, and when um, I'll show you the actual satellite images, you'll see why possibly they will extend it, but it needs to be done now. But here in the tan, this is special weather statements, and this is uh, severe thunderstorms, could turn into possible tornadic activity later on. So come in here anywhere you're at in the nation and click on your area. I'm going to click on Central Mississippi just to give you an example. And guys, I hate to say it, but today is going to be a deadly day in the U.S. And uh, all we can do is be aware of what's coming and try to take precautions and avoid the worst of it. But in the green areas, which includes our, excuse me, in the red areas, which includes our county, they're talking about significant risk, high temps in the upper 90s, peak heat indices 110 to 115, heat stroke increasingly likely with prolonged outdoor activity. Guys, that can be deadly. It can happen at a lot less temperature than that. But when you're dealing with this type of uh, risk you've got to be careful i don't care if you got to take a day off work don't do gardening or yard work or whatever you got to do you and your pets and your livestock need to be at least in good shade with plenty of moisture and you guys can see in the orange here this includes uh, right up to philadelphia laurel up to the uh, east of greenwood and west of your poor you're going to be at 105 to 110 here in the yellow outside of this columbus and here in this area along the alabama border you're looking at heat indices near 105 these are deadly don't take a chance with it go back to the uh, go to weather.gov it's going to come up with that map that i showed you the different colors all over click on your area click on the area where you're going to have a friends or family and uh, just if you got to do outside activity don't do it it's not worth the risk. Plus, we're going to have a lot of air problems moving through the country starting last night and then for the next few days. Now, let's switch to COD satellite and radar imaging. You can see that in Oklahoma, guys, you're already starting to see these storms pop up. And more than likely, the system that's moving out of southeastern Arkansas into central Mississippi, crossing the Mississippi River now, could develop as the heat of the day goes on. East Coast, you're going to have to watch out for the remnants of uh, Tropical Storm Cindy as it comes up, in, <clears throat> excuse me, comes up into that area and uh, mixes with some of this heat. Just pay attention to it in the next few days. Now, switching filters, again, COD, radar, and satellite. You're seeing why I'm saying that Indiana should be in that gray area of uh, air problems, air quality problems in the air quality index. Notice across Lake Michigan and coming up into Wisconsin. And notice that this is coming out of the right area. We're not getting that much, although it's starting to build from the um, Alberta area, Saskatchewan, British Columbia, up in that area. So that's starting to build. But what this is uh, coming from or where it's coming from, I noticed a few days ago satellite images that were just to the east of Hudson Bay, large fires were starting. And so, again, you saw the air quality indexes 
on every state except Indiana, and that needs to be changed. This is moving under this cloud cover like we saw before. Will it make it all the way to the East Coast? We're not sure yet. But even here in central Mississippi, you can see this cloud cover right here. That's keeping us, well, it's just jumped to 104. So I'm, let me back that up a little bit. 104 now outside um, real field at uh, an 85, again, 11.01 a.m. Now, I'll tell you what, what we're seeing coming down from Canada, that's just a small portion of what these fires are doing. You guys in the UK, let's look at your satellite. Now take a look at this again here. You've got the smoke coming down through Indiana to the west of Lake Michigan, actually coming across Lake Michigan now. And do you, I know you guys are starting to see the coloration change, that orange tint. And then that's coming out from under large fires that are right here again to the east of the Hudson Bay. But now tr kind of watch how this smoke moves across the Atlantic. Look at the accumulations now here, right there. This is Africa. Here's the Mediterranean. Here's the British Isles. You guys in this area are more than likely seeing a different tint to the sky. These wildfires are, this wildfire situation in Canada is moving around our entire planet. Now, you think, well, will the smoke, well, the smoke can do one or two things. It can block out some of the sunlight, which possibly would alleviate some of this heat index, or would it be trapping it like a blanket to the surface? Either way, it's unhealthy to breathe. Air quality alerts, I hope, are up in Britain. You guys check that out all along there, uh, all along the islands, even down into Gibraltar. Check that out, guys. So this is moving, <clears throat> excuse me, around our planet. Pay attention to it. Uh, all over Europe, we got a lot of things going on over there. We're still seeing a lot of um, poker being played between the major powers. Um, and saw a couple of attacks that uh, were from the NATO side, and they didn't make it far again. It was like 12,000, 13,000 NATO troops were lost yesterday, along with all the weapons that are being sent there. You know, it's starting to sound like Armageddon after one of the great battles where for years they burned the weapons. Think about it. Anyway, you got to pay attention to the heat indices here in the U.S. And before I forget, I read an article, and I'll have to admit I put about 50% weight behind it because it's about three climate scientists out of Georgia Tech and it's pretty lip hearted anyway they are climate control all this they're all about carbon taxing but they had some interesting statements about the major cities in the US and that uh, they use Phoenix as an example and if you've I've been there in the summer and it was uh, like we're trying to run through a blast furnace getting from your vehicle to somewhere inside and, and it was terrible. You don't have the humidity you have here in the south, but that heat furnace effect is rough. It's a desert, by the way. And so you've got to realize that 800,000 people, and they said it in a report, would overwhelm all the hospitals in that area. People would have to do one of the laws we learned when, they were, when we had real science in school when I was a kid. When the climate changes, you adapt, you migrate, or you die. Now, one of the brilliant things that these Georgia Tech scientists are, they're working there and they get paid to write papers, said, well, they could, Phoenix, they were using, again, for an example, but think, guys, think about Texas. Think about the big cities, L.A. Think about all of those. There's a lot of other cities other than Phoenix. But they said one thing they could do was to plant trees on all the streets. And these guys are scientists. Have they not read that Phoenix is in a water crisis? They are stopping any new building permits after, I think, the first of the year or something because if you can't prove that you can um, provide water to a subdivision for so many years, then you can't get permitted. What they're doing is now, and this was called out in one of the meetings about the corruption of the Board of Supervisors in the Phoenix area is they're letting the people that have 
slip that money under the table, continue their projects. And when that's played out, it'll be a little harder. But so if you're going to plant millions of trees, how are you going to water them? Georgia Tech scientists. How are you going to water them? People are already having to dig up their grass. What, you, what you're going to have to say is the obvious. Is that you, certain large cities, especially in desert areas, have overwhelmed the water aquifers and the water supplies. And uh, it's going to have to be broken up. In other words, some of you guys are going to have to start moving. If I lived in Arizona, it would Phoenix would be the last place. Now, you get up north of Sedona... Some of those up in there and Payson, much better temperatures. It still gets hot, but you guys need to think about that. I know that a lot of the young kids love the bright lights and the glory of the city limit signs, as Chris Stapleton says. But they're a deadly trap when it comes to this type of congestion. And, uh, guys, you got, like I said, the heat there is already bad. So what you're going to have to do is... In any of these reports that are coming from the so-called scientists, uh, gather what information you can can from some of the data, and then use that. Look at the other reports about, uh, like the drought reports, Lake Mead, and things like that, and you make your decisions. But now is the time to do it. I don't understand how human beings could enjoy that type of congestion. The traffic there is terrible. Dallas and Phoenix are the two places that I hate the worst when I have to go to the Arizona area, Sierra Grandkids. The traffic is so bad. And it's, I haven't been there in two years. They came here last winter. But uh, it's with the border policies, I'm sure it's a little more congested than it was two years ago. Notice also down south of the Baja off of Mexico, appears you've got a system forming there. It's that time of the year. We'll, now, we'll have to keep an eye on it. You guys also... Sometimes they will move offshore and head out into the Pacific. Sometimes they will move up along the coast and actually get into the Baja Peninsula. Most of the time, though, if they do that Baja trek, that moisture will end up either Southern California, Arizona, up into that Four Corners area. So you've got your blessings with these storms. Guys, we're watching this. Again, this is going to be a deadly day in the U.S. Now, when I started the video, it was 100 as far as a, a real field, now it's 107 at 11, 12 a.m. That's how fast these temperatures are rising. And they're, they're not going to peak out, according to what I can see from the local weather, till around 5 p.m. this afternoon. So we still have six hours of heat increasing. Get your pets in. They can have a heat stroke just like you can. We're watching it. You watch it, guys. It's a heads up. Be safe.